I think the end result of a lot of his plays in there reminds me a little bit of Guy Forger, you know, a really scary talent who could hurt you from almost anywhere. The service action is different, but he's a lefty and it's also big. Doesn't quite have the foot kick, does he, that <laughs> no, uh, Guy Forger had. French fans in full voice already. They were fabulous last night out on the Kia Arena for Adrian Manorino. What a story he's proved to be in that five-set win over Ben Shelton. I noticed he didn't want to know who he was playing next, Fontilla. Adrian Manorino. Do you reckon he knows by now? I, th I think he's pretty, pretty clear on who he plays right now. Well, if he's listening right now and doesn't want to know, he better turn off the volume. Because <laughs> he, he's drawn now to play the number one Let seat. The great Novak. That's a confident looking start. Gee, I would have given up my first two years of prize money for that surf. <laughs> Same here. What a luxury it is and how necessary it is. Well, these days more so, isn't it? Yeah. Parents own a, a very famous uh, butcher's back home for where he uh, comes from. You ever find yourself in uh, that part of the world? You know where to go. He likes protein. Hubert Burkach to serve. Everything he's touching at the moment is Love just magic. Uh. Well, we've seen some matches, Fitzy, with uh, average on. rally lengths of five, six shots, but I don't think this one's going to necessarily get there too often with uh, the way that both these two play. Short and sharp and to the point. Uh. And then we have one of the longest rallies of the tournament. <laughs> <laughs> I still believe you, though, Edge. Many, there's a few around after that point that may not, <laughs> but I do. <laughs> uh, they're two good players here. This, this will be fun to watch, in my opinion. Her catch is hovering, isn't he, at the bottom end of that top ten. There's Craig Boynton, friend of ours, friend of everybody. Really good guy. I, the action. Four Helped my marriage the other day. He went past and I was sitting with my wife, Jenny. He went past and he told her how good a bloke I was. I, I, <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Good on you, Craig. My wife said, really? She was checking your ID to make sure you were <laughs> the John Fitzgerald. No. <laughs> Any old one would do.
game. Not Hurkacz. given any width for Umber and some of those rallies there. Her catch, of course, he's not the biggest One hitter off the ground on. because he hits it so flat. A lot more massaging it through the court. Umber's going to have to generate his own pace. Uh, Jeremy Shardy. Fifteen love. Oh. Hitch, what's your feeling on on where Hugo stands when he serves and so much on this side of the court, but on the second court where he stands closer to the sideline, the single sideline, than he does to the center tee. I see Adrian Manorino does that a lot to another French lefty. Jack Draper does it. Yeah. Obviously, the one thing that it does is open up the angle even more for the swinging serve out wide. Um, Adrian does it because he wants to hit a backhand as his first shot more often than not from this side. So uh, he prefers that to his forehand. So he protects his forehand plus one by standing wide. And I would assume um, it's the same. Umbe has actually moved, I would say, a good half a meter, possibly more wider. seen him in the past from sort of 2021 I think probably the impact of Shardy coaching him Jeremy 25 in the world he's obviously had a lot of experience seeing what works what doesn't work and I would assume that he's decided that to to make it even better for Umber off the plus one shot to make a back end more frequent that he's gone a little bit wider just takes away the purity serve on the ad side obviously oh. Yeah, to me, there's pros and cons in, in standing there. I can see the pros. But yeah, that T serve, which he possesses, he's got a good one, but it's got to be centimetre perfect, doesn't it? This one right in that T down the middle for the ace, but you start leaning wide if he stands there. to be able to get there, just couldn't do anything with it. An enticing start by both, Bellies two up. By two against one. And again there, you can see where that ball lands from her catch, that first circle just off the center line there. 
and we see that Umber plays it with his backhand. You know, most players, as a lefty, you would feel as though that should be a forehand kind of ball, but that's what I'm saying. His plus one, he feels much more comfortable parrying the deeper return, the fast one through the middle with his backhand than he does with his forehand. Right. A mighty fine analogy, I might say. Got to find one in a week, right? <laughs> Time for modesty here. Time. Just touching on the point you're making, Fitzy, about you know that change in serve position actually just looking at his first serve points one from 2022 to 2023 and he's gone up eight percent so it's been a good shift for them there oh and that's why through the middle on a tennis court often can be your better play. This looks good, doesn't it? You've got the man on the run. But in the modern game, that's what they can produce. I'm oh. still willing to bet Umbera will win his fair share if he hits that. I mean, that was an awesome forehand down the line, but you can't make that every time. Ooh, a late forehand off the kick. 30 left. Nearly off the throat, caught it late. It was the kick that. <laughs> uh, good for her, Miriam. Sees the funny side. For Tila. That's what a big server does, and Craig's Boynton seen a lot of those games. Quick service game for her catch. Game or guts. Two games on. Tell you what, that it's a healthy beard, isn't it? It'd it need a bit of grooming. <laughs> he liked it. He liked what he saw. Yeah, that was a pretty uh, emotive Craig Boynton early in a match. Yes, he's not. He's not normally no. that emotive. Interesting. No fuss, generally. Again, you look at the ball through the middle of the court Love today from her catch. You look at when he takes it wide, and I would imagine more often than not, it's going to be when he feels as though he's got a good look at the line or cross-court ball where he can really fire it in. But there's an awful lot of shots going through the middle of the court and just narrowing the band of attack for Umber. Oh. Oh. Probably backs up your theory, Mark, that one. Umber gets the backhand that he wants for his first shot in the rally, and he, he hurts her catch with it. Oh. It's a pretty flat 15. ball, but it, it's accurate. That, this two-hander, fabulous shot there. It's a 
there's the trade for Umber is the fact he's not going to get as many aces as somebody like uh, Hercatch who averages about 15 a match, the Frenchman just six, because that slider down the tee kind of comes into the opponent so they can cheat to cover the wide one, get racket on the ball, but the other one that comes down the middle does come to them as well. So it puts more of a premium on his plus one yeah, shot man. than getting three points with his serve. But he's, he's doing a nice tidy job of that in the opening five games. And it's 3-2 to Umber. Got to pick your poison on return against her catch. It's very difficult to get a read. You look at his numbers, you look at his splits with his first serve, he mixes it up beautifully. There's not really any kind of pattern that you can tap into. I mean, this is a volley that he normally doesn't, by the way. He's, he's talented 15, in there 13. for a big man. The biggest drawback for me watching him is the pace on his ground strokes against the best players. So his serve is phenomenally good, and, and he can do it under pressure virtually every time. He's got an all-court game, hasn't he? He really does. Um, and he's a big man. He's, he's about 6'5". 30 on. Moves well for a, a 6'5 guy. And he's clever around the net. He's got an all-court game. I think what's stopping him going from that number nine position a little further north, and this is what they're working on, is oh. maybe some heaviness of shot off the ground strokes against the best players, I'm talking. Well, that is the wrong shot entirely from her catch. Yeah. That was a brilliant carve, though, from the back. Give him credit for putting her catch in that position. Well, anything with slice that, that stays low and fizzes or fades away gets your attention. It's tough to control. Big moment now. from Umber through the middle. The previous one had been deep and it was just too tough to handle. By four against the two. And he targeted the forehand, which can be the weakness of her catch.
Well, he's a gentle giant, is Hubert Hercats, but he, he gets his heart rate up here a little bit when he loses his surf. Not happy. Sometimes yeah. doesn't use his legs to get down on that forehand. He's quite tall on the shot, so his head is separated from the racket head, and it's a lot of hand work that has to go in and be perfect. And you're right, Fitzy, about the pace. You know, Hercatch sits at fourth slowest in terms of his forehand speed on the tour. Dimoner, Manorino, and Purcell are lower than him. And then you, sorry, on the backhand side, I should say. And that kind of number is a, is a problem for him to try and get through opponents. Well, he... He's number nine. Yep. He's a top ten player in the world. Uh, he's a phenomenally good tennis player, but we're talking about him going north from that number. That's what we're discussing, and it's probably something he needs to, and I'm sure he is working on. He's got a wonderful coach, a guy that knows his tennis, knows his, his player super well. Fifteen and thirty. Mm, Missed a couple of simple ones here in this game. Sorry, just to clarify, that was actually his forehand I was looking at. Yeah, her catch is 117 kilometers an hour on his forehand. That's the same as Dimonor. You've only got Manorino and Max Purcell in the world's top 50 that are slower than her catch. So you're talking about the speed on the forehand wing, off yep. the racket. So when they're hitting a forehand, yeah? There you go. And this guy's got about 10 kilometers an hour on it. Speed isn't everything, because the leader last year was Chris Eubanks at 133. It's not necessarily going to make you uh, sit in the penthouse, because Djokovic is, was sitting around 127, which is the same speed as Hercatch's opponent today. But it is a, it is a factor, there is absolutely no doubt. And Sinner? Sinner last season was sitting at 128. Mm. Yeah, so they, that's faster. Gee, I was impressed with him yesterday, Yannick Sinner. Mokolaski was uh, just Shana. to the right of Craig Boynton. Her catch is physio. He would have been doing a little bit of work after that five-setter that the pole had in the previous round. Cash desperate to try and recover the break as quickly as he could, unable to do so. Amelie's the Frenchman leads 5 2. Crowds have always been special at Melbourne, aren't they? They've always uh, had their own kind of identity to the other slams they've always come here the painted faces as we take a, a little look at another one of these points quick 10 meter sprint there beyond board said about tell us that it was a game of a thousand little sprints and he wasn't wrong as we take a little look at a beautifully modern forehand that umber possesses a 
that so many players had to make that sacrifice to move away from home and to Poitiers to uh, train. And it's a big decision because there's no guarantee that the outcome is going to be what you want it to be. Pretty much 99% of people that go to academies end up not making it onto the tour. It's a tough ratio, big gamble. Thirty fifteen. Well, this is quite often what happens. Her catch on either side of the break. He's won some easy service games. He, he has a lot of these. Catch's perspective, that was the easy part of the salvage Amelis job. By five games to three. Now comes the hard part. Here's uh, Craig Boynton leaning over. Patricia Ape, one of the main agents in tennis, just behind him. What a forehand. What a forehand there from Umber. That was better than it may have appeared. It was a miss hit from her catch. It fell awkwardly and became very, very difficult for the Frenchman. He handled that beautifully. Okay, it's just getting another racket out of his bag here. Not sure why he had a pretty good forehand on that previous ball. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't think the string popped. That's 
just too good. Yeah. 30, 15. Some decent pace on that back end, and Bear, which is another reason why he likes to hit it with his plus one. Sat in the world's top 10 yet last year in terms of pace, average 120 Ks. And some people's pace it is very deceptive in terms of the eye test because you look at somebody's sinner hit the ball and you can see 14, how fast it is 15. and you can you almost hear it. And Umbed set last season just 1K below sinner's average. And when you look at it out here, you don't really feel that. Adrian Yafit Murimo is uh, the person sitting next to uh, Jeremy Shardy. French tennis player. Yeah, and they'll be very happy with that performance. That was clean as you like, as will Paul Henri Mathieu to the right of Tessa because he's the Davis Cup captain for France. And his man is looking very good after half an hour out here on the John Kane Arena. Oh. Contradiction, isn't it? Really, he, he he does become emotive sometimes on the court, and off the court, he's the quietest, most delightful gentleman. This guy, but yeah, he, he gets a bit uptight. Got to control that. Fifteen off. So you can tell his persona is just. Uh, You're pretty fiery on court, though, Fitzy. Well, I, I had a lot to be fiery about. <laughs> Someone says oh, I was reasonably 30, modest. I said, yeah, well, 50. I was, had a lot to be modest about, too. <laughs> <laughs> He'll settle down. He'll find his feet. He's too good a player not to. Her catch. 40, 15. Oh. Gee, we talked about how dangerous he was, didn't we? 40, I mean, when you've got 30. a left handed serve like Guy Forge <laughs> or something similar, and, uh, and you can rip ground strokes like this, you're, you're dangerous. And that's why we've seen Hercats try and play through the middle of the court because he's just opened it up a little bit and Umber has taken advantage. Oh. Game for Pats. A little more stable First at that game, particular shot. Set. An encouraging start for Craig Boynton's man. So proficient in the serve department that he takes care of 50% of the game so comfortably in general. Most uh, points won on tour last year behind the first serve, Hubi Hercatch. To the uh, opening set, you can see that the win predictor has uh, swung heavily in favour of the Frenchman. 68% chance of winning. The 
though, I think the win predictor had a 1% chance for Mira Andreva yesterday in a match against uh, the French woman Di Diane Perry. So uh, the win predictor's got to have a strong day today to come back from that. Mm. That was a weak moment. And her catch is an awfully good player to only be down one set. It's a long race, this one. Best of five, first to win three. Oh. just a big server isn't he pitch 15 on. he can construct points he's clever he's got feel for a big man and uh, he did that well Expect the long journey with her catch at 69 30, matches last 15. year. 39 of them went to deciding sets, more than half of them went to a deciding set last year for her catch. And a good record when he dropped the opener as well. Good battler, won 12, lost 14. Any strike rate near 50 is excellent on the tour. Yeah. And let me guess, he's Tiebreaker record, I would expect, is pretty decent. It's decent, it's not great. It's not? No. Off the top of my head, because we haven't got to one yet, I want to say he's, I had a feeling he sat just above 50% last year. Yeah, that surprises me. With a serve like that. Working hard. He's got his head down. Yeah, just 51% of his break has won over the last 52 weeks for Hubie. Given that particular number, he'd dearly love to grab the early break. Craig's fired up today. It's unusual for him. He's a very down-to-earth man, Craig Boynton. And, uh, he sees this as an opportunity, obviously, and he's, he's got some important information he wants to impart to this man. surprised that uh, when he breaks early in a set he goes on to hold those breaks
15-30. Well, he seemed a little stagnant on that second point and didn't really commit to the slice that he missed. And, and then the flair of the, fen the Frenchman has really uh, given him a chance to break back. That can erase any lead that you have in a her catch game. He's absolutely pumped that in. Fastest of the day, 218. And Huber, I think, is sensed it. He, he's staying further back. It's not... Still can't oh cover gosh. it. Serious serving. Yeah, fabulous placement from her catch. Lovely Four speed. And he's quickly seven. into a three love lead. Time. French fans trying to get uh, the Aussies to get involved in the wave. It's uh, a little slow in coming. There's a couple of arms going up. Not uh, not much enthusiasm for it on the John Kane Arena at the moment, but plenty of enthusiasm for the contest. Quick pivot towards her catch in this second set. Oh. Perhaps wasn't expecting to have their forehand there. That was a quality little diagonal dagger in there from uh, her catch on the return. some good points together doesn't he 30 15 Shadi's final match of his career coming against Alcaraz at Wimbledon this year
suddenly trying to overcomplicate things perhaps in his own mind here and there as he's chasing the score. And he is in danger of potentially dropping down a second break in this second set. Exactly the scenario he faces. Always felt like this was going to be a slightly unpredictable match. Both players capable of winning it. And it is very much advantage her catch at the moment. He's certainly looking for the one-two yes. punch, isn't he, when he when he stands wide. He's not getting a lot of free points off the serve. And you mentioned it. Six aces a match, was it? He averages. It's hard to believe it's only that many for a serve like this. But because he stands wide on that second court, he's looking to, for the one-two play. Rather than just winning but with the serve. So if you let Umber take the first good hit in the rally, that's where he's at his best at, at the back of the court. He, he likes to be aggressive. He, he's got a really competent two-hander, aggressive two-hander, and his, his forehand's good as well. So her catch has to be a little aggressive earlier if he can, which he's doing this game. the pendulum has swung. Four catch leads by four games to love. Pretty safe to guess who might win this set now. Yeah, it's almost a uh, Iga Svontek looking scoreline set. She's been trying to teach him at the United Cup that he doesn't have to always go to tiebreakers and maybe he's taken that on board as we see uh, the dominant shot, of course, for Hubi, which is this serve polished. Seats quickly, please. Ladies and gentlemen, behind the players, thank you. Effortless power. Well, if he can hit his forehand like this more often, he can make inroads into that top ten. That's a bomb. Oh, he is a trick shot master. No, he's turned into a hot dog on his pitch. Didn't know he had that, really. He's got some amazing shots when you're on the internet and look at what her catch can come up with. <laughs> I mean, he has absolutely flushed that right out of the middle of the racket. <laughs> That's brought a smile on Tina. his face. See, he's, he's not the type of personality who would do it deliberately, I don't think. It was just an, a reflex action for, for him. Oh. But he knows where the racket face is. Got to give him that. Forty 
Extra little side spin on it from Umber took it wide, and the gap widens. Five love. Umber leads by five games to love. Oh, let's just take you back to that little moment here. Absolute bullet of a return. Her catch. Still, but still managed to come up with such an impressive shot between his legs. <laughs> I wonder if he was thinking about the depth he wanted to get on that ball, because he got some. <laughs> come on, give us a cheesy smile, Luby. Good improvisation. Time. performance in this second set. Love 15. The King of Poland loves it. His middle name's Repertoire. doesn't make too much of a difference generally who starts serving in a set but I would think for Umber at the moment it would be psychologically better for him to start the third set at least ahead it's been a while since he's felt that 30 15 the opening set finished almost 25 minutes ago and he has not been able to put a game on the board since then That her catch is hitting the ball a little harder than normal today, because because he's it, it appears just watching it visually here, watching the whole court that Umber is struggling a little bit with his power off the back of the court, which you know, we both mentioned maybe needs to be improved. Oh. Let's second so. There. Did Ugo, he caught the back edge of the line, I think. Game of it. Four catch leads by five games to one. Not cause for a massive celebration for Umber, but he does stop the rot in this second set.
But can her catch finish off what was a very fast start after a disappointing opening set by his standards? Oh. That's relatable. Yes. Love 15. Not much out there is for me, but I could relate to that. And you prolonged your stare at me when you said that, too. Now he's, he's, he's sort of pulled off a couple of those slices, hasn't he? It's probably a bit too low percentage, that one. Come on. 15 on. There's about a 30% swing when uh, somebody on the ATP tour grabs the opening point of a server's game from about 90 plus to about 60 in terms of your opportunity to break. Having said that against her catch, I'm not sure that differential is quite as large. Always a couple of those lurking around the corner just to turn things around in his favor. The outcome of this second set was sealed when Umber lost his second service game. Well, it's never going to be his biggest forte, is it, to defend her catch, but he's not bad at it for a big guy. He wants to be on the front foot. Attacking most of the time if he can, but um, did a pretty good job there to try and get a few more balls back in play. Quick and stunning turnaround by her catch in the second set. Takes it, dropping just the one game. And again there, you just get a little sample of why Umber stands so wide on this ad side. Just trying to organize his feet correctly, get the racket back, be in a good position. When the ball's deep, obviously when it's short, different story. pitch it's within the rules 30, so I don't blame Ugo he's just taking advantage of the rules whoever sets the rules is responsible for that 100% Return. Again, right underneath Umber. And that is one of the advantages of hitting the ball flat. Everything has a, sort of a, a consequence. Doesn't always look great to hit a flat ball, but when you can flight it like that, incredibly difficult for the opponent. Yes, yes. 
40-30. Would have been decision from her catch there. You could see indicating to Craig Boyne that maybe he should have gone with his slice. First game, third set. Swing and a miss. Must have been looking at what Humbert was doing. It took his eye off the ball there, her catch. Well, at least we're underway again. Win predictor time. You have to say it's all over the shop. Isn't it? The win predictor, it's gone. In fact, I've, I've almost got whiplash seeing how much percentage has changed over the <laughs> It's a strange thing for me. Those algorithms that uh, decide that. sequence of shots there from Umber and he's just asking for a little bit of advice from Charlie here whether he should go back or come forward and try and cut down the angles yeah actually moves a little wider here is he just trying to goad her catch serve T ah. gee that's a great serve though isn't it I mean I'm not sure what you do with that 15 on I think it's a toss of the coin do you come in and do you actually just try to reflex a, a return from in closer or do you let or, or do you let a server increase the margin the, the, the angles is it the further you stand back? 30 15. One game old, by the way. Oh. Oh. Gee, that's a shot, isn't it? He's dangerous. He's trying Thank to fire you. himself up now. there at the end of that rally had a microsecond to decide does he go down the line yes. or whip it across court and he went the wrong way On a dime. I didn't see those numbers, I just saw dollar signs. It's going to solve a lot of Craig Boynton's worries. early at the start of the third. Yeah, he, he, he's playing a good game, isn't he? 
try to just run around, move around, didn't he? There, and there, he was just trying yeah, to catch it, her much. catch his eye. Are you convinced all the way back there is the right play? Not at the moment. Oh. I like how he's shuffling around at the moment. He's trying to do something. Hold of some good returns there, and there he's put her catch under pressure by the quality of his own shots. That beard has been regrown. It was uh, a bet that Hubie and uh, Craig had after he won a significant tournament, which he did back in 2022 on the grass of Haller, a 500 event on the ATP Tour. Thank you for sitting down quickly behind the players. Thank you. And Craig had to uh, get the clippers out. For Tila. By two games to one. Well, he's ahead on games, and he certainly looks as though he's found a way back into this match to be competitive. Umber, 2-1. Time. Their last season came down to Australia, lost that match to Runa, then he actually got injured against uh, Davidovich Fakina in Montpellier, right leg injury for the Frenchman there, had to take a couple of weeks off. Oh. Top outside the world's top 100 throughout the course of 2022. He had entered a 
a challenger to try and go and regain his place in the top 100. The third round here actually had already pushed him back into that stage. But Luca Van Asch in a final of a challenger a couple of weeks later after recovering. It was the longest challenger final in history. Oh. Three hours and 56 minutes and a couple of match points. Oh. And that amount of winning has uh, put himself in a position here against a player in the world's top ten of potentially taking charge of this third round match. Here is another opportunity. Second service game for Herkatch in the third set. And that's better. Nothing coming easy for the pole at the moment. 15, I tell you, when he comes forward like that, though, and has, has some time, I feel confident he's going to make it. He, he's, his volleys have pretty darn good technique, good approach. Beautiful. these types of games you know that he doesn't have to come from love 30 that often in the course of a match you know a few times maybe but these are the big ones this goes a long way to having success in a match recovering from this deficit and you can see it wears thin for an opponent he felt like he had a chance here Great game to get out of that. Game for match. Two games yeah. on. That's a confidence booster. with that forehand after the return comes back into play from her catch. Change up. We've seen her catch trying to look at Craig when to play the slice, when not to play the slice, when to introduce it. That was the perfect one, wasn't it? Through the middle again, but low, just forcing Umber, perhaps, who likes to do a bit too much with that ball to potentially make the error. He is so streaky, not just in the middle of matches, but Love at any it. stage. Entered 2021 women and of course, six straight match losing streak. Just couldn't get it going at all. And then made the semi-finals. Well, that makes him extra dangerous when he can back it up with that serve. Seven points in a row here so far. Three break points. I think Hubi thought that might be out through the air. He was expecting it to go wide. Caught the line. Oh. 
Well, it's his moment, isn't it? In there, as it was for her catch last game. These games are big. If you can get out of trouble, out of a hole. there that ball was low it had slice stayed low harder to control even though players know that the ball will react differently off your strings when the ball is a slice compared to a, a top spun ball still tough to control and there's been perfect when he had the break point Looking a little nervy out here at the moment. To the slot where her catch wanted it through the middle and he gets his reward a break in the third three two This has been a swing, hasn't it? The peaks and valleys of a five set tennis match. Class. And, and, and what we've seen here is her catch raise his game. He's playing better. So, therefore, to counter it, Umber has tried to play better and has made more unforced errors. And I mean, and that is the outcome you see so many times in matches like this. It feels as though Umber's not playing as well, but the reality is that his opponent is playing better, so he is trying to stay with him. And therefore that comes with a far larger degree of risk. Like you shut the door. Yeah, and compounding that problem for him there is the fact that he doesn't know where to stand on this big serve it, it, it's a huge weapon it is hard to counteract hard to get back into play sometimes just have to look at that game 60 seconds of perfection from her catch who does like playing lefties career record on the tour 27 wins seven losses on hard 
22 wins and just the five losses. Doesn't mind a bit of South Poor action. Gee, at 60 seconds, we lost seven games there at the beginning of this set. <laughs> You're going to have to go full Zen on me. Love it. <laughs> going to have to forget about it and live in the present. That's in the past. I get it. I get it. Yeah, it's just taken me a while. I, I do, in all seriousness, though, I, I do like him there's game. I, I, he could, uh, I don't know how high he could go, but, gee, I find he's a dangerous player, a really entertaining one, and uh, I hope he continues to go up that ladder. We get a whole bunch of stats here. Um, sometimes, to be honest, it's overwhelming. But uh, it does allow you to have a little look at sort of juice and add direction, which I think for somebody like Umber with that wide stance you've been touching on, Fitzy, is actually pretty relative. First serves in on the juice side for Umber in this match, 75% on the juice side. On the add side, that drops off significantly to just 61%. And that was a, a much slower serve, so clearly trying to make that serve. When he does make it on the ad side, he has a much healthier winning percentage, 71%. So maybe you can argue when it does go in, his stance helps him with the plus one shot compared to 56 on this side. Help! 14, 13. But where perhaps it's most interesting is you're only as good as your second serve. When you look at the differential today against her catch, second serve points one. On the juice side, 78%. On the ad side, just 46. That is a huge swing. I mean, I'm not saying there is ever parity because there isn't. Players have a favorite side juice to add. But that is a big drop off for Umber, and that is something that's going to be very difficult for him to recover. As I say, we get an overwhelming numbers of stats, and I think some of them are just there for the sake of being there. But that, if I was coaching him, would be something I would certainly be looking at at the end of this match, thinking, OK, well, maybe it's a, a match-style um, match-up that's a problem for Time. him against her catch on that side, and we need to adjust his core position maybe against other players. It actually works OK, and that's something that you would need to drill down in. But today... Her catch having a, a field day on that ad side on returning the second serve from Umberas. We'll take you around outside, which uh, once again is absolutely packed with fans coming in. I was actually on the way down coming into Melbourne Park today, and there was these uh, three girls coming in and trying to get the Iga Schwantek pronunciation correct. She's made a bit of a splash here in Melbourne. Well, she is numero uno. Why wouldn't she? In a household of four, I'm not even numero uno in that. <laughs> so that must be a pretty nice place to be. Are you the best tennis player in that four-person family? These days, shuffling around, no. He stepped it up, hasn't he? I mean, this serve is devastating. What? I'm not sure what Umber can do when he's in this rhythm. 
He's tried. He's tried in standing in different positions, hasn't he? Maybe right up oh. on the baseline might be an option. Well, even when he gets the serve back, he's he's not making inroads. And he, he's he's being hurt by the first ground stroke from her catch, and not able to get on top in the point. Let for seven. So good. Sweeps that one cross court to a beautiful length. Views. Opening service game of this third set for her catch was troublesome. And once again, Umber just inserting a little jeopardy in this third set. Feels like a crucial moment for both. Advantage, Burkash. Drops the speed, finds the angle. He doesn't look like he gets nervous at all, does he, with that service motion, even on the big moments. Just produces the same technique. Missed a few forehands off the slice, hasn't he? Four catch leads by five the three. So the spin is different. The ball will go lower off your strings with a slice. So you have to aim higher if someone slices the ball at you. And he's hit the tape a few times here. Thirty-one. 
40, 50. There's the benefit of the, the hard one that's deep, the first return. Optimism and hope in this third set for Umbert, given his returns in the last game. Her catch needs to be careful as he tries to serve it out. one of the great courts in the world of tennis, the John Kane Arena. Such a good atmosphere in here. Passionate, enthusiastic crowds. And this one still may have a fair bit of life in it. Head. It's a, these are new Again, balls, by no. the way. It should help the server here. But for somebody that has such little spin on the ball, that was an incredible lob from her catch, as you say, Fitzy. I thought that was Umber's point all the way. Fifteen on. Well, he's got his teeth into the game. Umber, he's. It's a massive moment, isn't it? Serving with new balls. It should be an advantage here for her catch. But both balls have come back so far. Thirty fifteen. Not as fast as, but equally as valuable. May that prove to be. I thought for sure he was going to three quarter that down to the other sideline, to the backhand wing of Umberi. He just went for broke. He's broken, can you believe it? 
in six or eight to break there. New balls. Dankui Ugo almost got off to uh, a perfect start here in the third set, almost got the break, but he hung around and managed to get it in the tenth game. And that Love smash yeah. may haunt her catch. sure what her catch was doing loitering around inside the baseline by that much he got caught fairly comfortably from a relatively routine shot from the Frenchman But he's turned it around 30, to his credit. 15. That was a miss hit. Drops in. He's done well, hasn't he? He's he's alive now in this third set. Too well to get out of this game as well. He's a little sun in his eyes. Carmichael would be happy with that. Absolutely. Famous old coach here in Australia. Used to go to France, play a lot of tournaments there, money tournaments. But he, he coached Pat Rafter, he coached a lot of young Aussies, and Leander Pays. He loved the high lob. Oh. Great court positioning there 40, from Umber. Was waiting for the cross court shot there from uh, her catch and could just catch it on the rise. He didn't need to swing that hard, kept control of the ball, and in doing so, keeps control of the game. 40 30. deficit in terms of the he opponent's is. ability to get the ball back in a court when he fires one down the tee. Just keeps homing in on the returner.
Seen a number of those redirected plus one forehands just going wide of the target into the doubles tram line. Good return again there from her catch. Scintillating rally. And what a test of Umber's character. He should have won it about three times Advantage prior number. to the shot that eventually got it done. Well, I thought he was in trouble when that forehand came back. Her, ca her catch had a chance to swing at it. And that touch volley in the end was world class. Huge disappointment for her catch as he's unable to serve out for two sets to one lead. He's got a battle on his hands. French fans a little muted, understandably, in the second set where Hercat ran away with it. And they were on the edge of their seats as it looked as though her catch was going to push forward for a two sets to one lead, but they are in fine voice now. A couple of games on the spin for Umber. Her catch trying to take it into the tiebreak. Pendulum here, isn't it? Oh. Oh. He just overplayed that one there. Some errors to be had from her catch's racket at the moment. And just trying to make that return perhaps would have been the right play. Just test the nerve. Turn off a 213 out wide rather than just chip it back and just wonder whether Umber's overplaying the moment. Full of confidence, understandably, after what has just unfolded. Oh. Oh. 
So here we go, Pitch. Six games all, tiebreak. Just two games ago, we thought the set might be over. But it's a bit of a flip of the coin from here. does go there often, doesn't it? He misses it wide quite often. He's prepared to take the risk. Not always, but often seems to have the upper hand in tiebreakers. You, you play, you miss one ball, and then he serves an ace against you. You feel like you're in a hole. Wow, what a start. Three zero, Hurkacz. Kind of felt as though Hurkacz uh, was under pressure in his. Uh, Last service game, and that's where Mbeer had the chance to kind of really make something happen. Suddenly playing with a little bit of freedom that we haven't seen in the last 10 minutes. It's a game of centimetres sometimes. Gone completely off the boy. 5 0. Hurkacz. It's a shame for him because uh, he showed a lot of courage to get back into this set. Just as smooth as her catch would like. Six straight points in this tiebreaker. Goes Six, the zero. ninth Hurkacz. seed's way. And it was almost as though Umber has put so much pressure on himself to make it happen, having got himself back into this third set. But he has just been completely inhibited. Six one, Burkaj. 
Is that the final reminder in this set from Umbera of what he's capable of? Fell well below that standard for the last six points. Seems to be easier to mentally when you feel like you've got less to lose. You feel like the set's probably gone. too far away to think that this is possible for Umber. Well, two mini breaks for this man are, are bigger than they normally are. It's not that far beyond the realm of possibility now, though. Six, four. Well, it's six. Touch. It's six zero. You thought it was, but now you don't. It's a strange old game. And in these situations, you you really need to avoid the negative thoughts that can sneak in after leading six zero. The dagger to, to put the set to bed. Hard work, complicated. That's exactly how her catch likes his matches. Two sets to one. Get your nose in front with this weapon. And it can be psychologically a bit scarring for the opposition. Game on catch. First game of four sets. He's found himself in this situation 16 times now. And he's only come out of it uh, once with the win. And that was against uh, Thomas Martin Echeverry at Wimbledon in 2022. Coming back from two sets to one down, which is why her catch now with a very favorable win predictor on his side as well. 
Okay, incidentally has lost from this position on four occasions, which is a pretty high number when he's only found himself 11 times in this situation. So many players, great closers from being two sets to one up when you're a top tenner. Not so much with Hubi. I wonder whether he should, in his matches, change where he stands. You know, some yeah, stand out there by all means. But then, but then, you know, for a period of two or three games, maybe move where he stands, give the returner something different to look at. Not sure. Thirty fifteen. Oh. in the fourth set for Hubi Hercatch. 30-15 on uh, Humbert's serve. Two sets to one to Hercatch. And again, directing that forehand to that part That's of the court right. has not been that profitable for Humbert. Too many unforced errors, too much spillage. That's why perhaps he went back cross court there. Her catch. 40, 30. Maybe he could have seen the future there. from her catch. What an athlete he is. I mean, he's 6'5", this guy. That, that was awesome. Wonderful hitting, yes. wasn't it, from Umber? And he deserved to win the point in so many ways. He just nodded there. Acknowledgement of how good that was from his opposition. Just to show how much uh, her catch wants this early break. An early break, if he can get it. Advantage, Shambhu.
Pretty good level there, Mark. Come on, come on. Just a little bit of a warning shot across uh, her catch's bowels as well. That uh, Umbe are very much still in this. Won't have it all his own way down this uh, fourth set stretch. Oh. Further evidence of that. Love it in. That was smart. He has ventured to the net 15, more times 15. than Herkatch. 19 times he's been incredibly successful when he's got up there, winning 16. And maybe just a little bit more of this will stop Herkatch defending at the back and force him on the extremities of the court to have to drive the ball back. chance for the Frenchman second serve suddenly he can't miss this is the best tennis he's played in the whole match he's stepped it up hasn't he 40. he tried to earlier in the match couldn't go with her catch but now he's just Grab the bull by the horns, so to speak, Mark. Do you have that saying in England? We do. The forward down the line, which has been sort of very variable, suddenly he's found a nice finish to that point. Oh, that is some save of a break point from her catch. Well, he had, he had no choice, did he? He's, he has to go for this now, or the Frenchman will, it seems. having a second serve that good that's just huge 173 from that height with that bite and kick it's like a mule pitch it was a great serve I just wonder whether Umber a couple of times today in some of these big moments could have just found a way yeah. to put the ball in the court he's been out of bounds on a couple of returns Same value for putting the ball in the corner and extracting an error than you I do for hitting a clean winner. 
and there are gifts to be had at times from her catch throughout the course of a best of three and especially through a best of five match his form can fluctuate He's got to get that serve directed near the line. Otherwise, if it goes into the hitting zone, Bumbeer will just block it back with that beautiful compact technique he has. Great first serve there. But he's being made to play at a high level. Umber is really taking it to him here. Still in the balance this match. Two to one. And delves into his uh, box of tricks there to get himself out of trouble. Down break points in that last game. Critical. Good scramble to safety. What can he do here? Oh. Thank 
It's amazing 30, 40. how thin that veil of success and failure can be in a tennis match. So close and bare in the last game to taking control of it. And all of a sudden, he's staring down the barrel of a gun at a break point himself. A little tentative on that last shot, understandably so. Her catch. He was intent in getting it across to the lefty's forehand, wasn't he? He didn't want to go down the line. He's been burnt there a few times. Umber's good across court with that two-hander, so he kept going to the forehand and pressed a little hard on the last one. Oh. Does have a fairly right-hand dominant backhand as well, her catch. Usually the left hand is the one that does the good work, and it does come out flat because of it. Yeah, that's the one that hurts him. What an effort there. Her catch is putting in a huge effort. Advantage. How good does he Her defend catch. for a big guy? Amazingly well. He was under the pump from go to woe. And comes up with that. That stays low and gives him bad problems. Where does he miss it? in the net. Beautiful shot from Umber. Easy to look at the missed volley by her catch, but Umber yes. put him under pressure with a beautifully glided backhand. And his hopes of staying in the Australian Open were really rested on that one shot. So there was huge pressure. Michael he'd be so happy with that love the percentages and that's what that is you throw it up high like that it's tough to put away from back there it's got to be deep Too good, too good. Gutsy. Deuce. Super gutsy. See how many points he's won when he's landed the ball at that sort of segment of the court. It would be a high percentage. 
can he land the break point? And what a moment to produce that. Four catch leads by three games to one. I thought he might stick to the slice and hit two or three of them across court, looking for a short one, actually. But, you know, with that sort of tension and adrenaline, you just do what's natural, don't you? What a backhand. That's where the right hand dominate helps. You can kind of cut across the ball, flatten it out. And he has absolutely nailed it. Oh, this is good from her catch. He's got such good feel on the defense as well. It's one thing for us to talk about his athleticism, but when he's there, what he does with the ball, the perfect kind of flight and pace to buy himself time back into position. Oh. He's on a roll. He's running right out here. Thirteen. That body language though from the Frenchman. He's he's in his mind he's not going anywhere. Down a break, yes. But remaining positive, good for him. from her catch it takes a 4-1 lead in this four fourth catch by four games to one Catch looking uh, nice and relaxed as uh, we whisk you Time. back outside. Over uh, 50,000 people came for the day session yesterday. It's some extraordinary numbers, over 900,000 last year. And you would think that the uh, Aussie Open is going to break those kind of attendance records this year, as you can see here. Absolutely rammed to the Pat Rafters here. Well, it, surely it's going to go over a million. I mean, they added a day at the start, 15 days. Yep. There was over 80,000 on that first day. So they'll, they'll push a million. Ninety thousand here yesterday. They'll probably break even after your salary. We're starting to feel a bit insignificant with ninety thousand here. 
great key, but <laughs> you're a stand-up comedian. Patchy. Fifteen on. Be unfair to say he's wilting. He has just been overshadowed by the brilliance from the other end in the last ten minutes or so. Got a few shots of his own that yeah. can damage her catch's ambitions. Oh, what a shot. Game He's not going anywhere in there. Showing great character here. And he was there. Love of ten. Sometimes you do question, does he belong as a permanent member in the world's top ten? Oh. And then you watch this passage of play mm -hmm. and you understand why. Well, you actually don't understand why he's not a little bit higher. Oh. Or maybe we're seeing it. We've seen uh, a couple of times that he's just got a little tight when he's had the lead. You know, I'm really impressed uh, with Umber's commitment here too. He's he's not going anywhere. He's he's going to make her catch earn this. And stranger things have happened. Can't get a free point now. Well, he had 15.40 here four games ago on the, sa in the same end. He's given them cause to believe. He's changed his returning position through this match. He's been deep. He's been up on the baseline. He's hugging it right now. Can he claim the break? And does her catch go back to the tee and feel as though that Umber can't produce another return like he just did from this side, or does he change it up? If he goes tee, he's got to get it close to the middle line. And he has. He has absolutely nailed it. 
I mean, that's a perfect serve, isn't yes. it? I mean, nothing anyone in the world can do about that. Well, maybe Novak, but he's not human, so... <laughs> <laughs> but that's a perfect serve. If he goes, uh, you know, a quarter of a meter, a, a third of a meter inside there, it'll come back. Oh, yes. Well, this Absolutely is, this, painting yeah. it. This is going to win it for him, I isn't it? You would expect this exhibition of serving. Well, he can't find the forearm, but that was a great yeah, illustration of what Fitzy was talking about. Didn't quite hit his spot, and it came back. But that was how good that serving was under pressure from Four her catch. A game away games from games the fourth round. What if anything has uh, got left? Polish fans about to celebrate. No room for error at all for the Frenchman. Thank you. Well, he went to serve out the third set and fell at the last hurdle, did her catch. Had to win it in a breakup. So, it'll be interesting to see how he approaches this. Well, if he approaches is it, as he did when he was down break points, he's going to see himself into the fourth round for the second year in a row. First serve. Seventeenth ace. than this at the final hurdle. No frailty, no brittleness seen, just brilliant. 
Let Fassel. We take your hat off to we go in there. Forty thirty. surname in the fourth round of the Australian Open before they had to erase it. Umber with a shot that keeps him in the Australian Open. And what a shot it was. again that ability to dial up the power and the placement when he needs it the most 222 k's of liquid speed match point number four fourth set and uh, by heck he nearly got back into it 
Yeah, there'll be a few lessons. That's the third time he's lost to Hercash. Never going to be easy playing somebody that serves as big as that. And just occasionally the erratic nature of the Frenchman hurt him in some big moments. Just some percentage play to go along with all the charisma that he delivers on a, on a tennis court will perhaps allow him to go even further up the rankings from 20 where he currently resides to a place where I'm sure he'd love to get to, which is where Hercatch is in the world's top 10. He's got the pace. We saw it numerous times. As Hercatch delivers his verdict on the contest out there. Well, Hubie, congratulations. You've equaled your best performance here at Melbourne Park through to the fourth round of the Australian Open. But that was tight and tough. Two hours and 47 minutes. It's hot out here. Tell us a bit about the match today. Congratulations. Uh, thank you very much. I mean, Ugo is, uh, you know, he's such a good player, such a good competitor. So, you know, if you leave him a little bit of space, he's going to take it. Uh, I definitely need to dig deep, you know, inside and then just try to battle after this first set. And, uh, yeah, I just try to stay positive and, and, and fight. Just as soon as you finished the win there, you walked straight over to the side and was it a hat or a towel you gave to someone over there? What, what was that about? Yeah, I mean, to the, to the, to the amazing <laughs> supporters I mean the the guys who were supporting me throughout the whole match and giving me energy and really means a lot and uh, uh, yeah just just a little bit of gratitude and hope, hopefully hopefully he's gonna enjoy it very very special tell us a little bit about your coach Craig Boynton who I don't know if he's still up there he's got the best beard at the Australian Open there's no doubt about that former coach of Jim Corias many Americans what, what's he bringing to your game at the moment Oh, a lot. I mean, definitely, you know, he was helping me throughout the match as well. But we have a lot of talks and just try to improve our game. And he, you know, he believes in me and, and really, you know, gives me the confidence. Also, he has so much success in the past and he's such a great person. So we're, we're really having, you know, a uh, you know, good, uh, good partnership there. Well played. Through to the fourth round. We'll see you soon. Yes, and uh, thank you so much uh, to the amazing fans. Uh, you're really, you're really great. Also, also the French fans were were supporting Hugo. They were, you know, they're really fair crowd, and, and they're bringing energy. So thank you for being here. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, One more time, Hubie Hukac. Well, it does go to show that you can be really elite at what you choose to do in life and be an incredibly good person as well. That is Hubie Hercatch. I think so. Straight out of the Pat Rafter playbook. Alcaraz uh, t-shirt there as Hubie signs his name not just on the cats but into the fourth round. And somebody that he's never played before potentially looks as though it's going to be his fourth round opponent, the 21 year old from France, the wild card. Arta Kazar up two sets to love and 5 1 against Greek Spore. So it looks as though that's going to be a first meeting between those and what a talent the Frenchman is. But he won't have faced too many players that serve the way that Hubi does. No. I tell you what, though, uh, a player of the future. Yes. I, I, I loved watching him the other night. It's the first time I'd seen him live. Six foot tall and serves like he's 6'4". I mean, he's got a big game and he handled the pressure. He, he'll bring it to Herbie. Yeah, he's a very interesting character, isn't he? The 21 year old from France, lots of uh, strings to his bow and an interesting upbringing and everything else. And it's going to be fascinating to see him take on one of the best servers on the men's tour, if not the best serve as he says thank you once again to everybody that was uh, in the John Kane arena as we wind our way through some of the stats that were relevant and particularly in terms of first serve points one at 81 percent but more importantly for Umber some lessons probably to take away and on that ad side it's going to be interesting to see whether he sticks with that policy that we saw today against her catch or whether he can blend it because I agree with you I don't think it helped him on the ad side particularly today I, I, don't, I don't think so 
you know, I, I'm not a huge stats guy, but I, I think you'd have to look at the stats a bit to really work it out. But it just didn't seem to be effective enough to me. He's not getting enough free points, I don't think, by standing out there. So, uh, yeah, and, and he can change it. Yep. Or he can experiment with changing it during the course of a match. So maybe that's something to look at. Katsmanovic getting through for a second time in a row, saving match points against Struff and today against Tommy Paul in that fourth set. And the American with a couple of match points trying to defend that semi-final run from last year, but unable to do so. Katsmanovic through to take on Alcaraz. That will be a ground stroke paradise. Utopia, though, for Hubi Hercatch as he moves through to the last 16.